Gabrielle Beauchet, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to have a chance to tra- talk with you. Uh, we're going to be really exploring the the role of purpose and leadership and what you talk about in terms of the purpose economy. So it's going to be a fun opportunity to have a really robust discussion today. As we get started, I wanted to share Gabrielle's bio with the listeners. Gabrielle Beauchet has been called the next generation of motivators by Tom Ziegler. She is the best-selling author of five books, a TEDx presenter, and has personally worked with the U.S. military, presidential campaigns, and Fortune 500 executives. Gabrielle has been featured everywhere from Glamour, Business Insider, Fast Company, Los Angeles Times, and NPR. Gabrielle is the co-founder of The Purpose Company, based in Dallas, Texas. Uh, What a fun background, Um, and I love the name of your company. I love the focus on purpose, Uh, so it's going to be a fun discussion today. Uh, Before we launch in, anything else about yourself that you would like to share with the listeners? Yeah, I um, I started the company, the Purpose Company, really after spending the last decade or so focusing on generational leadership. And so a lot of times folks kind of know me as the millennial girl. So my TED Talk is all about how millennials can be the next generation of uh, next greatest generation. Uh, I've worked with a number of top executives, leaders, and military, like you said, really focusing on that cross-generational leadership aspect as well. So it's a really great marriage of being able to not only discuss uh, what purpose means today for leaders, but also to what purpose means to each generation inside of the workplace. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. I do quite a bit of research in the area of, of generational differences um, related to motivations and purpose and such and how that translates over to the workplace. Uh, and they're definitely, I mean, there's lots of similarity, similarities across the generations, but there are some distinctions and some differences as well. Um, and purpose is kind of one of them. Um, uh, millennials and Gen Z students and workers, they, they have a real drive towards purpose and they want to see that what they're doing matters and that they're making a difference in the world. And it's really, it's important for organizations to figure out how to leverage that passion um, and to connect, you know, purpose of individuals with the purpose of the organization and make sure that purpose is meaningful. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so what do you think, what do you see as the connection between purpose and leadership? Um, how, how do the two relate and how can leaders better tap into purpose? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that purpose and leadership are absolutely connected. And in fact, that they're so connected, it's hard to differentiate between the two sometimes. So purpose is what you have inside of you to help other people. So it is a collection of your experience, the roles that you tend to play, your ability to help others, and what we call your origin story, the kind of moments in your life that have most shaped you. And so everyone has this purpose inside of them, just like everybody has this kind of leadership DNA inside of them. And I love how John Maxwell defined leadership as as leadership is just influence, plain and simple. And that influence is really um, such an integral part of being able to use your purpose because that influence could be a platform, it could be a relationship, it could certainly be a company, it could be uh, being a parent. Uh, But really how we've been able to define and study purpose over the last seven years and going really deep into it is recognizing that purpose, like leadership, is vocation agnostic. So you don't need to switch jobs, switch careers, switch roles to be more in your purpose or to even discover your purpose. Uh, Your purpose is really just um, up to you on how you're going to ultimately apply it. And I think the same is true with leadership. You can lead yourself, you can lead others, you can lead a family, you can lead a small team or a multinational organization. But those skills that you develop really um, in the discovery of purpose, I think are absolutely connected to the skills that you need to be able to lead yourself and lead others. I love that. Um, and, I, and I agree. I, I think that it, there's a, just a clear link between purpose and leadership and effective leaders are, are individuals who don't just use, you know, the levers of carrots and sticks to try to get people to do stuff. Um, it's people that understand and know their people. Uh, their, their leaders are, are individuals who um, will help people see their own potential and help them to achieve and maximize that potential. And sometimes that's skills related, sometimes that's knowledge related, but a lot of times it's, 
it's it's a grander purpose uh, that people have that they want a chance to be able to achieve through the work that they do. And so leaders, as they understand that, they can they can um, take on a really important role uh, within the organization to connect, you know, be that connective tissue between the organizational um, drivers, the organizational purpose, and the products and services, you know, that they get, they send out into the world to hopefully make the world a better place. And then, you know, the, the individuals, the, the, the members of their team, um, so that everyone feels, you know, energized and passionate and driven to really just do awesome work and mm -hmm. to innovate and to, 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 uh, to push the envelope on what's possible. Um, so, you know, passion, um, purpose, and leadership are all uh, just so closely uh, connected, I think. Um, you, you talk about um, this idea of a purpose economy. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about what you mean by that and what that means for leaders moving forward. So we really emerged out of, as you study different trends, particularly in the generational space, but also to economic trends of how employees and employers have developed relationships, you've really seen these kind of three core phases. So we used to have a much more transactional relationship between employees and employers. So that was this transactional economy where I come in, I work for you, and you give me a paycheck and a couple weeks off a year, and we call it good. I retire, you, you know, uh, pay into my 401k, whatever relationship is there, it is a, a purely transactional one. We really started to see that kind of that um, departure from a traditional or a transactional based economy to what I call more of a transformational based economy, where I as an employee want to come in and I want to make your organization better and I expect to be made better in return. So there is really more of a relationship between employers and employers where the conversation started about work-life balance, certainly working from home, um, and having a relationship with an employer who's looking at an employee in what we call whole person-based training and whole person-based relationships. So you're looking at them as a whole person, not just what you do from nine to five or eight to six. But as we've really seen, particularly because of this pandemic, we've even transitioned away from simply a transformational-based relationship into what we call the purpose economy. And the purpose economy is really, um, is really designed by this concept of, I want to, as a consumer, as an employee, as an employer, I want to participate and partner with brands based off of their purpose. And I think that we've seen so much of this, particularly in a pandemic, where organizations are really being judged by whether or not they are putting people first. Are they putting people above profit? And I think this pandemic has really shown more than anything that people matter. Industries are, 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 are stalling, companies are on hold, the entire world is kind of at a standstill because we recognize people's lives, human lives matter. And that really comes down to purpose. And so we've really seen this huge emergence of this concept of purpose where universities are recruiting based off of come find your purpose and, and, and uh, companies are now saying, well, we want to be more purpose centered and, and employers and employees and even people who are exiting, um, say, a four year university or exiting one industry to go into the other are really looking for something that's more aligned with their purpose. And so the purpose economy is really a huge opportunity for those companies and frankly, those leaders who recognize that this is uh, the future now of what it means to lead, uh, to lead today. Yeah, I, thank you for that explanation. Uh, I, I think that's really, really important for all of us to consider. And you're right, this current pandemic situation has just, high, it's pushed us in a lot of ways, right? It's, it's certainly pushed us um, towards the adoptions of technologies and virtual work, um, remote workers, um, but it's also pushed us, I think, towards this human-centric approach, um, towards this purpose orientation. And no longer does it seem acceptable, to most people, I think, no longer does it seem acceptable um, to do business at the expense of people, at the expense of communities, society, Absolutely. the planet, right? Um, and more and more uh, consumers are voting with their wallets and their feet and they're going to those places that, that actually live by their mission and their, their values. 
<coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, they actually, um, it, it, it's not just about PR, but they, they're bought into this idea of corporate social responsibility, the triple bottom line, and that they're not exploiting their people. They're not exploiting consumers. They're not exploiting their communities or the environment. Um, and this pandemic has just highlighted that, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. given us a chance to see organizations that are people centric. It's given us a chance to see organizations that aren't so much. Um, and I think probably most organizations fall somewhere in the middle and, and they're trying to figure out in this moment, uh, how to better align their, their, uh, language, their policies, mm -hmm. their practices, their procedures within their organizations to demonstrate their commitment to their people. Um, and I think that's a good shift. That's a good movement. And I hope, you know, as the pendulum has swung that direction a bit, I hope that it won't swing back once you know, we have a vaccine once, once the pandemic is over and people are, you know, able to return to the workplace. I, I hope that we continue to have this people focus. I, I don't think that we can go back. I think that once you change the expectations of the workforce, you completely change the way that companies work. And um, on a generational piece, I certainly saw, um, have seen this happen as millennials came into the workforce where there was an expectation about working from home, more flexibility, uh, being able to have that quote unquote work-life balance. And now that millennials are not only in the workforce, but beginning to lead the workforce as we're reaching and talking at nearly 40 now, uh, we've seen the conversation and frankly, the standards around the workplace change. And so I think now, particularly because of what this has done, I think it really has, you're right. I think it's really right-sized the relationship again between um, uh, the kind of workplace leaders and those who are participating as as employees, as contractors, as gig economy workers. I, I really think that the entire economy has really shifted and changed to realize that um, there's a deeper responsibility that leaders have, and it goes beyond just treating people well. But there's something really powerful that happens as a leader when you help your people find their purpose. There's one thing to say, hey, use your purpose here, but there's another thing to say, find your purpose here. And that's really what I think is so powerful. And that's the, the topic of our brand new book, The Purpose Factor, is how do you first find your purpose and secondarily lead a team and help them find their purpose. Because once you do, I mean, we've run case study after case study and worked with everyone from the U.S. Air Force to um, top Fortune 500 companies, helping them understand and recognize uh, that when you as a leader help your people find their purpose, then connect it to what they're doing, incredible things happen. And we've seen revenue go up by 65%. We've seen retention uh, go way, way up. We've seen engagement, fulfillment, everything across the board shift simply because employees, number one, found out that they mattered, and secondarily found out that their work matters as well. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the, the research is very clear on this point. Um, there's so much research to support what you just said, and purpose matters. It matters for the bottom line. Uh, it matters from a human perspective, for sure. You know, we want, we want fulfilled uh, individuals working for our organizations who find meaning and purpose in their work, um, you know, from, from a human perspective, that's, I think, vital, and, and we have a moral obligation to try to do that, I believe. Uh, but, you know, just looking at it purely from the bottom line, it has an impact on all, all those areas that you just mentioned, which will help with increased uh, lowering costs, increasing profitability, increasing innovation, which will help you end up, you know, coming up with the new ideas, the new products and services that will allow you to to enhance customer retention uh, and, and just drive organizational success and competitive advantage. So, it, I mean, it's a no brainer. We, we need to connect with purpose. And I, I'm so optimistic as I look to the millennials who are taking on more and more leadership roles within organizations. I mean, formal leadership roles. They've, they've already been leading in informal ways, but more and more taking on those higher level formal leadership roles and they, it's important to them. They know it's important to those coming up behind them. And I think they're gonna to continue to drive us in that direction. And I, and I can't wait to see what that looks like. Um, I have to admit, like right now, you know, as, as we're in this middle of this pandemic and there's kind of global geopolitical strife on a whole variety of different issues, um, you know, 
it's easy, I think, to get distressed and to be pessimistic, you know, about what the world will look like in 20, 30, 50 years. Um, and I, I think we need to be, you know, serious about that. We need to understand the challenges and we need to understand, you know, the dangers of what's out there. But I also, am, I'm quite optimistic about us being able to face those challenges um, you know, broad, big, huge challenges like environmental issues uh, around geopolitical issues um, as a whole, but also the specific challenges within organizations. And so leaders as they connect to purpose and leaders as they help their people to connect to purpose will absolutely help organizations thrive in this new economy that we're emerging into. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, when it comes down to it, everything is about solving problems. And I think that's really the, the power that, um, that purpose propels is once you know your purpose, you can then apply that purpose to the problem that's in front of you. And I think when people are empowered, whether they're consultants or, or employees or, again, you know, folks in the gig economy, once they get to be empowered and have that permission because I think that's one of the biggest challenges that folks have is, number one, they don't know if they have permission to pursue their purpose. There's a big question there. Does that mean I'm going to have to change my jobs or move to another country or start a nonprofit or wait till I retire? I think some folks are afraid to find their purpose because it means that there's going to be a shift in knowledge and necessarily a shift in action. But like I said at the, the top of our conversation, purpose really is vocation agnostic. Once you discover your purpose, you can apply it in everything that you're doing. I think that's what's really, really powerful. But then once you know your purpose, you then need to recognize that that purpose is the permission you need to then be able to, to use it to help other people, your coworkers, your family, or your, uh, your neighborhood, and really take on that problem solver mindset to recognize that that purpose, again, is what you have inside of you to help other people. And that means solving problems big and small. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, Gabrielle, the time has flown. We're about out of time. Um, this has been such a fun discussion and I, I would really love to continue it. And perhaps I can have you back on the podcast sometime soon so we can would continue, love it. continue to talk about all these issues and dig a little deeper. But before we close today, I do want to give you a chance uh, to share with the listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your company and more about um, your book projects and, and what you're currently doing. That's awesome. Well, thanks. I've had a ton of fun and I really appreciate you and your entire community. Uh, if you uh, want to learn more about our brand new book, it's coming out in September. September 29th is the release date. It's called The Purpose Factor, Extreme Clarity for Why You're Here and What to Do About It. So if you want to check that out, pre-orders help us out so much. If you jump on Amazon you, or you can go to purposefactorbook.com. And uh, we're so stoked about the book. We've got great support from folks like The Rock and Tony Dungy and Simone Biles and um, Gary Keller. And, and the list goes on and on of, of folks who've come out and supported this book. And so our, our hope is really that this sparks a movement within the leadership circles to really recognize that number one, purpose is discoverable for you as an individual. And purpose is going to be your superpower when it comes to how you lead and change the world. Awesome. Well, thank you. I, I, I really appreciate your time. I appreciate you, uh, all the insights you've provided. I really encourage listeners to uh, reach out to Gabrielle, find out more about her, connect on LinkedIn, check out her books, um, pre-order her, her new book, Purpose. This is all so important. And we're facing a lot of challenges in the world right now. And organizations are facing a lot of challenges. But we can address them and we can face them head on uh, as long as we're intentional about it. So thanks, everyone, for joining us today. It has been a real pleasure. I hope we get a chance, Gabrielle, to talk again soon. And I hope all my listeners stay healthy and safe. I hope you can find meaning and purpose in work each and every day. And I hope everyone has a great week.